no matter how much you sell, you're going to have to do maintenance on your machine. You can take it in for periodic cleanings and adjustments, but a lot of this stuff you can do yourself. Today we're going to look at Grandma cleaning her up, give her a bit of a service. Mostly it's just going to be a cleanup. There's a little bit of dust, as you can see. There's some crud, and you get looking around inside, and there's, there's fiber and stuff. So we're going to clean all this up and talk about why it's important. So the stuff you're going to need if you want to do this, you might want to use a pick or a toothpick to poke the rag down in and clean stuff up. I've got a chopstick. It works pretty good. If I need something smaller, I'll get a toothpick. But anyway, there you go. Nothing special. It's just a wooden chopstick. It's painted. I guess that makes it fancy. I also use it when I'm turning pockets uh, while I'm sewing. If I want to turn a corner out when you're sewing something inside out. You're also going to need a rag. Uh, just This is a scrap piece of binding I had for a quilt I made. Uh, you can see where I practiced checking the size of a buttonhole on it, but that won't matter any. Cotton works the best. This is cotton and polyester blend. It'll work okay. You can get down in there and wipe things out. See, it'll pick up crud. Uh, it'll also pick up oil. That's what we want mostly. We want to pick up all our excess oil with that. You're going to need oil. 3-in-1 oil. This is the kind of oil we've used on these machines forever. Uh, this oil is probably my favorite. It's just a light grade machine oil. It has just this cap that pops off. Ah, Got to be a he-man to get it off, but just a little cap that pops off. Some of these have a telescoping tip. Maybe you dig that. If you do far out, I don't like it because it's hard to get in there and it seems like it leaks and I get oil every dang place. I don't want that. So yeah, you just want some three-in-one multi-purpose uh, oil or a light machine oil. Pretty good stuff. And it's not too cheap. I think I bought this over at Ace Hardware for like three dollars. You're also going to need some Q-tips. My wife got me this fancy looking little Q-tip pack. See, it's got a little drawer that slides out. So we'll need definitely one, maybe two of those for our little cleanup operation today and our light maintenance. So that being said, let's get started. The biggest problem with most sewing machines is that they get dirty. They get dirty, you get rusty, they get kind of gnarly. Uh, you should give it a good wipe down. Keep a cover on it if you're not using it. I have a really fantastic cover that I made for her probably a couple years ago out of a Spider-Man bed sheet. Ooh, look, it's Spider-Man, Spider-Man covers my sewing machine. Yeah, okay, anyway, you get the picture. You want one that's Hello Kitty? Far out, man, make it Hello Kitty. But anyway, get something on it to keep the dust out of it. That being said, even with that happening on my machine, she still picks up a slug of dust from when I'm sewing because fabric is notoriously dusty. It's made out of fibers, little short fibers that sometimes come loose. Uh, they get everywhere. Plus, I've got a couple of cats running around here, and they get everywhere. So all of their little kitty fur and any sort of dust that they're traveling around with gets on everything. So it's just a terrible environment for any kind of a machine, especially a high-precision machine such as an old vintage sewing machine like Grandma here. So I'm just going around. I'm wiping everything off real quick, getting her cleaned up as much as I can from the outside before we actually start getting in and doing the nitty and gritty. Two areas we're really going to focus on today because these are the areas that'll uh, get you. I mean, realistically, this section of the machine right here is the key workings of the machine. So we're gonna take the throat plate out, get that monkey off of there. You could take your needle out if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to wrestle this thing out. There we go, so I've got it out. If you look on this, just above the little arrow there on my throw plate, you can see all these little tick marks. What those are from is those are deflections from a needle, where a needle got deflected either by the fabric or by something binding it up. It came off and hit this, probably broke the needle. At the very least, it scarred this up. Some of these go out quite a ways. So you can imagine that those needles were getting thrown out. But after 50, almost 60 years of use, I suppose you'd expect that. Anyway, that's one of the things we're trying to prevent today. Broken needles are generally a result of deflection. So if we can keep it clean, keep it rolling, we won't deflect. Once you get this apart and you're looking around inside, there's something to think about is if you take it apart, try and remember how it goes back together because there's nothing less fun than trying to piece back together a sewing machine that you just took apart to clean. Terrible, 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 terrible. So this is the Singer sewing machine toolkit that it came with back in the day. Got the manual, it tells you how to do all this stuff. Look at that, that's high 50s style, ooh la la. What I want out of here though is I want this little tiny screwdriver right here. 
we're going to use that to pop some parts out. Be very careful when you take these out, they are so tiny. And they could totally fall inside the machine and then you spend all day shaking it and poking at it and trying to get it with a magnet. I've done that before. You don't want to do that. Don't be that guy. Okay, we took this little retainer. We got to remember that it goes in with the arrow pointing back. But look at all the crud down in here underneath of it and the oil that it's retained. So we'll just wipe this down. You don't have to t tear your sewing machine apart. I do uh, because I know how dirty it is and I know what we need to get done in here. So we're going to take that apart. Pull this guy out, wipe him down real quick, and I'll put him right back. You know, for this machine being so old and being as used as much as it was, it's uh, in remarkably good shape. Now, if you look down in here, and you can't really see it on the camera. I don't know how to really get my camera in there so you can get a good eyeball of it. But it is filthy. So the good thing about Q-tips is you can wipe down with them, but they also are really good at grabbing a hold of dust and fiber. Look at that. I mean, look at all the crud it'll pull out of there. That's pretty good. That stuff's all waiting in there to jam up your machine, screw up your thread. If you get a lot of stuff in here, thread can actually get snatched up. You can get bird nests. Ten, you know, part of that's from tension from the, look at that. It's just from normal, normal sewing. You can get bird nests from top tension. You can get it from bottom tension. And if you don't know what I mean by bird nest, I mean when you go and you sew the dickens out of something and you get done sewing your stitch and you flip it over and everything underneath is all loose and sloppy and tangled up like a bird nest. That's what I'm talking about. And that's terrible stuff because you will not be able to sew very long if you keep getting bird nests. You're going to get really angry and you're going to start using bad language and everybody in your house is going to start looking down on you. And uh, they might even have an intervention about you and your sewing machine anger issues. So first thing we do get in there get all this crud out look there's even pieces of string in there there's some thread from a project long since done something in the last year that uh or well however long it's been since i cleaned it i think it's been probably nine months maybe a year um so you want to get in there and get all that cleaned out but i don't sew as much if i sewed every day every week i would probably be cleaning it at least once a month boy that sure looks really good look at all that crud and that's just from poking around in here we haven't even started trying to clean up for oil yet. But you want to get all of that crud out of there because it is going to make one hell of a mess with your sewing machine. Here's a clean Q-tip. I'll go back around. You want, It's like cleaning a rifle. You really want to do this until it comes up clean. And if you get a piece stuck in there, go back in and get it because there's no sense in leaving some cotton fluff in there when the, the goal was originally to clean all this crap out of there. Look, here's more of this stuff coming out. It's just amazing how much junk a sewing machine picks up over... Uh, the course of its use. Actually this looks really good. I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's got a little bit of crud here which we can clean out. And you might ask yourself why don't I just oil the bejesus out of this machine while I've got it apart? And you, Well you do want to oil it and you do want to get your uh, you want to get everything lubricated. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want it to get it so sloppy with oil that it picks up dust and then that dust sticks to it because I mean, our whole goal here is to get rid of the dust, get rid of the crud, get rid of the limp. But if you have oil in there, and you've got a lot of it, guess what? Your oil has now become a sticking mechanism for all this crud. Look at that. Holy cow. Who knew sewing machine cleaning could be so sexy? So I'm just right now, I'm just going to here just dry, cleaning out all the lint. And I really want to get it all out of there. When I first started working with the sewing machine and I was just learning how all this works, uh, I, I had to fight with this because I, you know, my first time really working on the sewing machine and I tried to clean it up, but I didn't get it very clean. So everything was kind of a mess and uh, I paid for it. And I've learned since then you want to get things nice and clean. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm going to put just a Scotia oil down in here. And you can tell where you're going to need oil. If it looks like there's wear down there, or parts are going to bang into each other, or they're sliding across each other, that's a good candidate for some oil. I'm just going to put a drop down here, and I'm going to cycle the mechanism. Let it run around and get the oil everywhere where it's close. Well, that sounds pretty good. Give it a little bit more oil, and then we'll go back in and clean that oil up. Wow. And this will help pull out some more of the dirt 
because the oil is going to help liberate it from the substrate, which is the plate underneath of the, um, the shuttle for the bobbin. You know, I guess the main thing, if there's a message to this video, other than, hey, clean up your machine, it's don't be intimidated by this stuff. You take it down to the shop, they're going to charge you 75 bucks to go through and look at this and make some adjustments. These are things you should be able to do. You know this machine better than they do. They're just going by a manual. You've probably got a manual, and if you don't, there's a bunch of places online where you can get a manual. Uh, Manuals.com, a couple different places, anyway. If you take this down to the shop and you haven't cleaned it up, they're going to charge you 75 bucks to clean it up and to do a couple of adjustments. Now, those adjustments and the cleanup and everything is available. That information's out there on a PDF somewhere on a website. But a lot of people will go ahead and do it because either A, they're freaked out by it, or B, they don't have time. They got more money than time. I'm not that guy. <laughs> and I kind of dig working on my own sewing machine, you know? I think it's kind of cool. Being in there messing with all the little tiny parts when I was a little kid, I really dug working on that sort of stuff. And I still do. There's a lot of comparisons to be made between what we're doing here and cleaning a rifle. Because the rifle, you go around and clean it up until it comes out clean, and uh, you kind of do the same thing with a uh, sewing machine. All right, though, that looks really good, though. I'm going to put just a skosh right here. That's more than a skosh. That might be a skosh and a half. Good Lord, look at all the debris. That's what falls through your machine between cleanings. So it's definitely worth your time to come in here and straighten up. All right, so since we've got it open, we're going to come down here anyway. Let's go ahead and clean this out, leave it open since we're working on it. And really the easiest way to clean this out is to just wipe, wipe, wipe. There's a few oil pumps we'll want to hit down here. Um, wherever you're going to go through a bushing, a bearing, something of that nature. Something interesting about these old singers is there's a lot of parts available for them still. You can get these feet. These are brand new feet. They're Well, they're not brand new. They're a couple years old. But the ones that were on it had pretty much just destroyed themselves. Corroded, turned hard, fell off. So I think for four bucks I got them. They're called bed cushions. They're, you'd think they'd be called feet, but they're called bed cushions. All right, and this is where we're going to do some oil. We definitely need some oil under here. There, right here, there's 245 gears. Let's see if I can turn this so you all can see it. There's a couple of 45 gears. We're going to get a little bit of oil up there in the crotch. Turn it a little bit. Let that oil get walked around on the gear faces. Ooh, that feels nice. Drip around the bushing on that side. Drip around the bushing on this side. There's a keeper over here, and if you just put it in there, the uh, capillary action will suck it back into the bushing. But really, you just want to get that drive shaft as sweet and slippery as you can. But remember what I said about having too much oil in there. If you have too much oil in there, it will take this machine and turn it into a greasy lint ball. So that's something you want to be thinking about. Okay, here there's pivots. We're going to give her a drop right there on the pivot. Drop right here on the pivot. Drop here on the pivot. There we go. Drop on that pivot. And then there's two pivots down here. One there. One there. One there on the masters. Over here on this pivot. Run it. I wish you guys could feel what I'm feeling. This thing is so smooth. If you're doing this, though, be careful you don't get something caught in the gears. Not only would that be a bad thing for you, it can also make a heck of a mess and ruin your day. We could put it back together, but I'm not going to, because here's what I'm thinking. I'm probably going to drop that little tiny screw again one more time. Get her centered back up in there. Put our little shuttle back in. Come on, shuttle, get on there. You want to make sure this is sitting up. There's a little lip that it'll sit on inside the retainer here. If it falls down in like that, that's not going to be good for you. So you want it up on its edge like that because it's not supposed to be dragging around in there. Wish I could tell you there was a fast, easy way to do this, but anybody who's ever worked with machines will tell you, nope. You just have to kind of get in there and mess around with it. Now, the way I'm doing it's just dropping it in to the hole and then using this to stand it up. Now we'll tighten it down. Okay, I'm having to loosen this back up because this feller fell down inside. He's not sitting on top like he's supposed to be. See how he's kind of jumping around? That's not the way it's supposed to go at all. 
So what happened there was that this wasn't positioned correctly. When you put this back in, everything has to be riding up on that ridge like we talked about. Here we go, we're half an hour into this and we've just got this back together. Check it and spin it, make sure everything feels good. These are back on the way they're supposed to be. Um, we're going to go back in here and just give it a little touch, just a touch, one drop of oil and we're going to wipe off the excess. Okay, there you go. Um, something else you should oil that I don't think a lot of people do because when I got this, these were dry as stink, is the the dogs, the, the feet, or the throat plate holders. So that's got some dust in it and it's not wanting to go down. It stays up. I can bring it down. This one goes down, but this one, I have to push it down. Just kind of got to let the oil get in there and work and then work it back and forth. And if there's any debris or dirt or anything weird in there, it will slowly break free. It's not a terrible thing for it to have to push down. It just means that when I put the throat plate back on, I'm going to have to do that. Okay, that looks really good. Let's put our throat plate back in, make sure everything's clean here and it looks good. So the one thing you have to make sure you do here is you've got to have the needle up and the dogs down with your uh, throat plate retainers up. See, I'm putting it in and saying, I don't like this. So then I move it back and forth until I get it to where the dogs go just below it. Drop the throat plate retainer. Make sure everything's seated. And you can close that up. And wipe it down. Okay, the next part to clean up is this. What this is, this is your hold down. So I'm going to back it all the way off. Get as much of that shaft up as I can so we can clean off all the crud. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is just covered with crud. If you take this all the way out, you got to thread it back in. There we go. I want it just to the top. You're also going to get this, the pivot for that. We're going to get the pivot for the camshaft back in there and the uh, riser up and down and then the hold down dogs. We're going to clean all that up and get it really, really shiny. So that when our friends come over, they don't say, hey man, what's going on with that sewing machine? Do you even know what you're trying to do here? So right now, again, I'm just going through here pulling out all of the debris that I can find and there is debris in there. It's astonishing to me how much debris gets inside my sewing machine. This ain't rocket science. All we're really trying to do here is just fight off the friction. This dust and stuff in here gets in here, gums up the oil. The oil all of a sudden turns into some sort of hard shellac varnish looking crap. Uh, that's not real good for the machine, so we end up with just kind of a mess. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wipe everything down real quick. See, that looks pretty good. And this can make a real mess down below, too. So you got to make sure you get the top. There we go. All right. Man, we are almost there. We're in the home stretch now. Okay, the oil points for this, you can see that on your needle arm, it slides up down. You know what? It's got a little bit of dust and crap down here. And since we're here and I got the tools out, let's fix that. Um... So what we're going to do is we're going to oil where this passes through here, through here, because there's a small pivot on it. <coughs> we'll oil the pivot on the back. We're going to oil this. There's your timing mark on that. Um, and we're going to oil the top. And that should grease that up and make it run like it ran back when uh, before I was even an inkling in my daddy's eye. This belonged to my grandmother. I think I, if you've seen my other videos, you know that. And, why this machine's important to me. It belonged to my grandmother. My grandmother passed it on to my mother, who had started to restore it, but my mother fell ill with cancer and wasn't able to finish the project. So she gave it to my cousin Deb. Um, Deb had it for a long time, uh, didn't really do anything with it. I don't think she really knew what to do with it. She didn't feel like she should throw it out, you know, being that it, was, uh, it belonged to her grandmother Willis. And she didn't really feel like she wanted to fix it, I think. So she uh, asked me if I was interested in it. Otherwise, it was going to Goodwill. And I said, heavens, yes, I'm interested in it. Not knowing what I was getting myself into. Everything was kind of gummed up, and it didn't really work very good when I first got it. But I've taken everything apart, cleaned it up, oiled it, taken steel wool to it where it made sense. Oh, that feels really nice. 
And I'm using this Q-tip now just to kind of spread the oil around and pick up the extra. And this is kind of a nasty part, but when this is down here, you're going to want to wipe it off because all that crud will just drizzle down to the bottom. You might have to be dripping down for a day or two. But there you go. That thing looks great. That is awesome. All right, so let's get the next part. The next part is this piece back here. This is your um, foot pressure. There's just this screw up here that screws it down in and pushes it up and down. That's all it does. Nothing to it. Adds a little bit of resistance to it so when you lift it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of oil up here on the threads. Screw it all the way down and screw it all the way back up. And then I'll reset everything. But I want to get those threads nice and juicy. Okay, now we'll go in and kind of mop up the excess so we don't have oil all over the place. And I don't get oil on projects I'm working on. It's weird that guys don't sew so much and guys don't have a lot of interest in sewing machines because they're a very unique piece of equipment. They're very complex. And if you're a guy that likes working on stuff, man, this is, I, I can't think of anything better to work on. These are a lot of fun. You can spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a, a, a military satellite building that and feel some sense of accomplishment from that. But you can also feel pretty good about rebuilding an old sewing machine. You know, just kind of taking it apart, taking the pieces loose, putting them back together, getting everything working as sweetly as you can. I mean, I, I really like doing this. I was a mechanic in a former life. Um, I was an aircraft mechanic. Here's your zigzag. I probably should point that out. Here's your zigzag uh, setting. You should move that in and out a couple times, get it nice and clean. Wipe everything down back there. Make sure there's nothing stuck. Because every time you move it, you know, it seems like you find a thread, some fiber, or something. Like I said, friction is the enemy. Friction kills everything. So if we can keep the friction out of there by keeping this nice and lubricated and keeping it somewhat clean. Yeah, I know. Even with cats, it's still hard to keep it clean. My cats will actually get up here. Not so much anymore, but when they were babies, they would get up underneath here and attack the... Uh, the cover, knock the cover off and get in there and play around with stuff. They're not the smartest cats in the world. They're kind of dummies. There we go. That looks really good. Okay, let's see. Let's see how she does. Oh, that sounds pretty, don't it? Let's take a look at the bottom, make sure everything's working down there. Beautiful. Sounds good. Looks like everything's moving the way it's supposed to. I can see a little bit of fiber that we missed. Probably just from me cleaning other stuff above it and it's coming down. Might be smarter for you to clean it from the top down. There we go. That's how you s give a quick service to your Singer 401A sewing machine from the uh, late 50s. Man, I love this machine. Uh, it's a heck of a neat piece of technology. It's empowering because I can fix my own stuff. In fact, today after I'm done shooting this video, I've got a bunch of pants. I buy my pants at Walmart and they're kind of crummy. That cotton they use sort of tears out where they sew it at the pockets. Uh, it, it starts to fray in different areas. So what I will do is I've got some old denim I'm going to use for patches and I'm going to darn darn the holes in my jeans. When I'm done, nobody will be able to see them and you figure every pair of jeans I save even though I'm buying the cheap ones, that's still 15 bucks, man. So I got five pair of jeans I got to sew up today. So at 15 bucks a pair, I just made myself what? $75. Win win, dude. All right, so there you go. That's how you service a 401A sewing machine.